So now that I have my outline, I'm going to move to what I originally had set up, which was these blurred. And I'm going to go to the, the one that's a little further. And I'm going to take a second pass, uh, a quick second look without it doesn't allow me when I'm blurred like this. And this is how I would want you guys to see your subject, no matter what it is. Through this stage, before you get to that detail stage, what I want you to do is see it and learn to see and read what you need, which is hard to make out. What kind of detail am I looking? There is no detail. All you see are blurred shapes of lighter, darker areas. So that's what you focus on. Now you really want to capture the shapes of some of these shadows as close, just kind of like that negative space reading we just did with that same care. And it's it's not just now reading the shape of it. It's also how light and dark, because here's where, as I mentioned, the value element of your artwork, when it's well done, you have a very strong drawing whether it's black and white color, if your values, if you looked at them and you said, well, this, this is not the same dark all the way through, it gets darker when it gets here and it gets darker in the middle, but then it, it gets lighter on the edges and lighter on this edge. All these little types of readings that you need to train yourself to begin to see, that's what makes the difference. Now, within that, we see some light, too. So I could generally just add ultra, ultra light values. What I don't want to do is add any value where it's where there's light. So if we see the light up here, just about in here and maybe back here, I don't want to touch it too much. Um, because obviously, then you're going to have, well, we can always bring a a kneaded eraser and bring back some of those bring back some of those lights by lifting but here I continue to look at the subtle changes in light I also look at the direction of those lines that I want to add shifting my direction so it kind of resembles the light rolling on that surface, giving us that muscle look, the structure of it. Take my time here with some of these lines, reassess my mapping of the light, and look very closely at how that light, even though it looks like a solid block, there shifts. As we get closer to the other edge, it gets lighter. But here we have some nice little pattern shapes of lighter and darker areas. So however much time I put invest into really reading it and capturing it, once again, that's the payoff. But there's something to it as well when the more the if you think about it too much, that's also not that good. You want to be intuitive. Intuitive and analytical almost at the same time. Which as many of you know, it's kind of how your brain, right brain, left brain work. They're both talking to each other in a beautiful way. One is focused on one thing, space and logic and language, and the other one complementing it. So not like it, don't let one take over and have them both intuitively and analytically. Let logic 
but don't overdo one or the other. And if you do, intuitive is what I recommend. Your intuitive mind has so much to offer. You know that saying where you can freeze, paralyzed by overthinking and overanalyzing? It's easier when you overthink it to just stiffen up, freeze up. And it, it kind of begins to involve a little bit of fear. You don't want to make a mistake. So I'm revisiting some of these areas and just adding a couple of extra directional lines. Really, really looking at the light. Notice how there's highlights in the upper part where the light obviously is hitting. But then in the darker, lower areas, we have shadow and then of course the color of the hair here it's also dark and that's it you just really that's what you're looking for little shapes of shifts in the light lights and darks and trying to match the value and the shape And the more you train yourself to do that, the better you, what I'm doing here, showing you how you should be seeing it. Oh my God, I've been squinting this whole time. Yeah, but notice how you completely forgot about detail. So finally, let me bring you back to, I think we can enter final stage. And here is where you really want to be cautious because this is where we generally overdo it. We overcook it. And once you go past a certain point, there's no return. And so you want to take it slow. You want to give yourself a chance to judge it as you're moving along. And the next most important thing is to know when it's done. And this one at least this area all of this is pretty close there's not much i have to do to it it gives you a really good reading we know what it is we could tell what it is we could tell even where the light is coming from we could see some of the muscle showing us the strength of the pose and all these other things we have nice patterns of line and one area that I'm saving for last is right here, which sometimes I see a lot of people would focus on it and do that first. And that's okay. And here we go. We're gonna go. We're gonna move right into that area. So so far, yeah, I'm very pleased. I could add a little extra dark in some of these areas here. And here's where your lines become really the key, the quality of your line, because if you just want to make things darker, and you do this kind of thing and just make it dark no you want to make it dark by passing over it one two three four five six seven you know eight nine times ten times whatever it is instead of just one or two and that's how you would do it with the same amount of pressure But just several times.
and it doesn't hurt to know a little bit about the anatomy or the structure of the thing you're drawing. And I say thing because it could be anything. A horse or a plane. You need to know a little bit about, okay, the main structure and how it's, the, you know, how you can get those main lines. And then everything else comes always right back to the same thing. Interaction with the space, negative space, shapes of light and shadow. So knowing a little bit of that structure, the more you know about it, the more you study it, the better results you're going to have. The closer you look, when you realize that's that's all we're doing, we're really, we're really, really looking closer than usual at a thing. In this case, a horse. And looking close means how close? Some of us are looking way closer than others, I'm sure. And then that's a matter of how do you focus your observation skills and really harness the power. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you can see a little bit better what I'm going to do here. Now for these, this is where we get caught up. Notice that you could do this in just a few strokes. There's not much. I want to make sure we, we go back to our week one. Again, I'm looking at shapes dark and light and I try to match the shape in that same in the precise space shifts in that light Now there's lots of little lines here. This is where you would blur. If you want to make it easier on yourself, you go here or even here first. And notice the things that we see right away. We see here, dark. I did that. We see here, darker. So let me match that shape. And notice it's just trying to match the intensity, the value of that shade, the location of it, the size of it, the shape of it. And even here, and I had that one kind of in there already, trying to really match the shape of it. There's a little more to it, like right here, lighter and back here go back to our original and step by step once again just a few lines with charcoal it's at, at this size it's almost impossible to add the the detail that we would generally would want to add to it meaning all the little precise quality of lines and there may be a little bit of light inside that eye that I needed to preserve, or I could try to bring it back with my tiny little eraser. Or I could do this. 
Just bring in a little bit of white charcoal. Little too heavy on it. And there it is. Now that I've done pretty much a full read, I would still call this stage, I guess stage three. We've been working our way up slowly from, from that first pass to the outline, negative space. Now I'm gonna look for the highest contrast so we go from biggest to smallest from simplest to more complex and it notice how it gets smaller smaller and more complex it also gets from lightest to darkest so i'm going to look for those darkest darks and i'm going to try to pop make it pop really with high contrast so the first one that really stands out is here obviously this one here all along has been the one that really caught my eye even from that early blur study that we did of lights and shadows you want to do this very slowly pace yourself kind of do it step back notice how just adding that little bit right there it really stands out it gives it that creates that volume which is the illusion that we're trying to create we're trying to create with simple lines on a two-dimensional format the illusion of something in space never forget that that's what we're doing so there are simple rules and tricks that help you do that and that's line, negative space, value, obviously contrast and in the values. And in a way, you would consider this your detail phase. So, okay, now we're working detail. You would add some of the lines that you need, but the main focus would be finishing touches meaning i'm looking for that extra punch of contrast lights and darks that's going to be my darkest lines that i've done remember lightest to darkest that would be this stage so as it gets a little darker i'm looking for those just areas and I want to make sure I stay consistent with what was there before so there's not a so it, it remains consistent so there's consistency with how we we we've been building it much darker tones here now if I go way too dark and it makes other areas look too light then I'm going to have to go back and add a little bit to those lights. And then that's going to make the darkers not lose the contrast. So you get really, you got to be very careful with how you develop each one of these sections or stages before you push it too far. And with simple lines, notice that again, I'm doing that pattern in the direction of the structure that I see. And then here, these darkest areas. Right underneath here. Right around here. 
And there's a little bit of light, so it's not like the whole thing is dark. That punches up a little bit of muscle right here. Now I notice a little bit of tail coming here on to the other side. Just those final little flicks of hair. Very thin. There we go. So if the teacher sticks to the do as I say, I should stop here. At this, at this point, I believe if I keep pushing it, it's going to be past that point where if I were to consider anything else, would I do anything to the background? Uh, maybe I could do just some simple, just I'm going to do some scumbling lines. To just kind of give it a little bit of sense of location, a little bit of space. So I'm just doing scumbling little leaves. And I'm doing this by not even looking at the paper. I'm looking at the screen. I'm kind of tracing with my eyes how those leaves look. And I'm just adding a little bit of that. Maybe a couple more lines here. And maybe a few up here. But this is a dangerous thing too because very soon, very easily, it could go too far. So notice that they're very broken. Kind of strategically placed. Where I would focus maybe a little more here at the bottom. Wondering if my composition was strong enough in terms of I could have made it a little smaller, have a little more space, and show that off a little bit better. And there we have it, a horse. So overall, just refreshing your memory on what we saw. The three main things I want you to remember would be Biggest to smallest, simplest to more complex, lightest to darkest. Overall, those the the three main things you want to kind of live by. Just when you draw, those three things, you need to just keep them in mind. Adding the negative space read to it is going to make your drawings way stronger. And... Then your quality of line, how you choose to and how far you choose to take your drawings in terms of what we call detail. Notice that at, at any point, well, yeah, you're, you were drawing detail. No, I was just putting lines in bunches, in areas, a little bit darker, in little different shapes. But my intention was never, ever, ever to add detail. And it just somehow comes together piece by piece. Just like a puzzle. 